the coming of winter morning more than 30 years ago. The person to whom she is speaking is myself. We are cousins, very distant ones, and we have lived together well as long as I can remember. Other people inhabit the house, relatives, and though they have power over us and frequently make us cry, we are not on the whole too much aware of them. We are each other's best friend. She calls me Buddy, in memory of a boy who was formerly her best friend. The other buddy died in the 1880s when she was still a child. She is still a child. There it is. It's fruitcake, Mother. I knew it before I got out of bed. The courthouse bell sounded so cold and clear. No birds singing. They're all gone to a warmer climate, yes, indeed. We're going to go get our pecans to bed. Buddy, stop stuffing biscuits and go and fetch our buggy. Suppose Mr. Callahan put that thing up there. Prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But he was going in there. Now, hold up that fence phone. Wait. Now, I'm... Oh, buddy, simply do not admire 
a man who puts up a barbed wire fence. What do we do if Mr. Callahan comes out here? We'll thank him nicely for his windfall pecan. Maybe we could promise Mr. Callahan a cake. No. Our cakes are presents for people we like and admire. Look! There's love here. Of course, lovely ones. Oh. didn't want to come. Why, you would have missed all the fun. Oh, my back hurts. Mine doesn't. Oh, well, I should hope not get to you. <laughs> when I'm old, you'll be very old. Yes, you'll have to bake all the fruit cakes yourself. No. Yes. And I'm not going to do a little work. I'm just going to sit in my rocker and watch. You'll never be that old. do that. The start will never stop, and there's barely enough as it is for 30 cakes. Are we going to the store tomorrow? Yes, indeed. Right after lunch, as soon as I finish my ironing. That's the part I like best. Buying things. The only thing we don't have to buy for our cakes is the pecans. All the rest, cherries and citron, ginger and vanilla, candied pineapple, raisins and lemons, flour and butter and eggs, all that we have to buy at the grocery store. This involves money. The trouble is we have so very little. Sometime persons in the house provide skin flint sums. A dime is considered very big money. I console myself for the thought that they aren't my parents. What we do have, we've earned ourselves from various activities, holding rummage sales, selling buckets of hand-picked blackberries and homemade jam and peach preserves. We also round up flowers for funerals and weddings. Once we won 79th prize, $5, in a national football contest. Not that we know a fool thing about football. It's just that we enter any contest we hear about. When we go to the store tomorrow, let's go straight to our post box. You're thinking about the coffee name in contest. It's too soon to get a ladder. They said winners will be announced before the first of the year. What if we win? $50,000. A.M. coffee. I would like a pound of A.M. coffee, please. Oh. It does sound delicious, buddy. And I wonder, I wonder if we ought to have added that slogan, though. A.M. Amen. People might think it's sacrilegious. Coffee companies love slogans. We'll win first prize. <laughs> To tell the truth, our only really profitable enterprise was the Fun and Freak Museum we conducted in the woodshed two summers ago. The Fun was a stereopticon with slide views of Washington and New York lent us by a relative who had been to those places. The Freak was a three-legged bitty chicken hatched by one of our own hens. Everybody hereabouts wanted to see that bitty. We charged grown-ups a nickel, kids two cents, and took in a good $20 before the museum shut down due to the decease of the main attraction. That's your picture show money until Christmas. We'll need it for the cakes. I won't go to the picture show. I want you to go. I'd like to have you come home and tell me the story. Why don't you ever come with me? I like to hear you tell me the story. Besides, 
person my age shouldn't squander their eyes. When the Lord comes, let me see him clear. In addition to never having seen a movie, she has never eaten in a restaurant, traveled more than five miles from home, received or sent a telegram, read anything except funny papers in the Bible, worn cosmetics, cursed, wished someone harm, told a lie on purpose, let a hungry dog go hungry. Twelve dollars and seventy-three cents. I make it exactly thirteen dollars. Oh, oh, I hope not, buddy. We can't mess around with thirteen. The cakes will fall, we'll put somebody in the cemetery. I wouldn't even get out of bed on the thirteenth. Well, shall we count it over again? Oh. Uh, I tell you what. Just to be safe. Let's throw a penny out the window. your complete attention. I shall indeed, ma'am, give you my complete attention. We have 30 cakes to bake this year. That's a generous lot of cakes. I recall that last year you didn't have enough of the candied pineapple. We have plenty of it now. All the way from Hawaii. Yes. I'll take a pound and a half. That's 50 cents a pound, ma'am. Comes to 75 cents. Count it out, buddy. Now, <clears throat> I need a box of ginger, large bottle of vanilla, five bottles of the little red cherry, two jars of citron, 25 pounds of flour, a pound of salt, three dozen eggs, two pounds of lard, one pound of lemon peels, candied, Two boxes of raisins. One pound of orange peels, candy. Two pounds of dates. A box of ginger. A large bottle of vanilla. Of the ingredients that go into our fruitcakes, whiskey is the most expensive, as well as the hardest to obtain. State law forbids its sale, but everybody knows you can buy a bottle from Mr. Ha Ha Jones, and so, we are bound for Mr. Ha Ha's business address, Fish Fry and Dancing Cafe. People have been murdered in Ha Ha's Cafe, cut to pieces, hit on the head. There's a case coming up in court next month. Buddy? What? It isn't so bad looking, is it? Real pretty. All those decorations. I hope Mrs. Ha Ha is home alone. Hope Mr. Ha Ha isn't here. Is he an Indian too? He says he's gloomy. Never laughs. Why they call him Ha Ha? What you want with Ha Ha? If you please, Mr. Ha Ha. 
We would like a quart of your finest whiskey. Which one of you is drinking, man? Oh, we... We want it for making fruitcakes, Mr. Ha Ha. Cook it. That's waste of good whiskey. Two dollars. Tell you what. You just send me one of them food cakes instead. Oh, you mean a sort of trade? Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Ha Ha. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Mr. Ha Ha. Evening to you, Mr. Ha Ha. Good evening, Mr. Ha Ha. Did you see that? He's smiled. Well, he's a very lovely man. We'll put an extra cup of raisins in his cake. cakes for friends not necessarily neighbor friends indeed the larger share are intended for persons we've met maybe once perhaps not at all people who struck our fancy like president roosevelt like the reverend and mrs jc lucy baptist missionaries to borneo who lectured here last winter or the little knife grinder who comes through town twice a year, or Abner Packer, the driver of the six o'clock bus from Mobile, who exchanges ways with us every day as he passes in a dust cloud of whoosh, are the young Wistons, a California couple whose car one afternoon broke down outside the house and who spent a pleasant hour chatting with us on the porch. Young Mr. Wiston snapped our picture, the only one we've ever had taken. 
Is it because my friend is shy with everyone except strangers that these strangers and merest acquaintances seem to us our truest friends? I think yes. Also, the scrapbooks we keep of thank yous on White House stationery, time to time communications from California and Borneo, the knife grinder's penny postcards make us feel connected to eventful worlds beyond the kitchen with its view of a sky that stops. So often the post office of the United States of America. Everything's gone. We're broke. It's all over, isn't it? Well, my goodness, that's no reason to feel sad. We should feel proud and happy. We ought to celebrate. We are. We are going to celebrate. Have you ever tasted straight whiskey, buddy? You know I haven't. Have you? Wait, 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 wait. We have to have a toast. We have to drink in honor of somebody. I drink in honor of us. Uh, to us. It's kind of strong. to uh, drink this for his chest cold. <laughs>
my heart a minute ago when you said this kitchen was empty. Now, you know, when you come home from the movies and you tell me all the stories about what you saw, I see everybody you're talking about right here in this kitchen. I can just see them before my eyes. You know, sometimes there are just so many in here, there's just hardly room for me. What was that one you were telling me about? Oh, it was my favorite. Now, let me see. It was about the gypsies when they were all dancing, remember? They were all dancing. Charlie's brother-in-law. Anyone in town hears about this? What a oh, scandal. scandal. Get down on your knees and pray. Beg the Lord to forgive you. twice as tall as the boy, so a boy can't steal the star. Well, I've never done that. Well, I didn't say you. I said a boy. 
other boys in the world besides you, you know. Well, they don't count. I'm your friend. <laughs> oh. Oh, buddy! Buddy! Buddy, come here. Let me... I think we found it. Oh, buddy. You're growing up. Three inches this year. You can't have a tree twice as tall as me. I'll never get it home. Oh, yes. I'll turn around and wait. Three. Stretch, up on your tiptoes. Oh, ah, you can't reach that top, I think. We found it. I think this is our tree. Where is it? Yeah, but... Stand back. Here we go. Two bits cash for that old tree. Oh, no. We wouldn't take a dollar for it. A dollar? Fifty cents. That's my last offer. Goodness, woman, you can get another one. Oh, I doubt it. There's never two of anything. project is the fashioning of family gifts. Of course, the most important present for each of us is what we give one another. I am building her a kite. I am fairly certain that she is building me a kite, the same as last year and the year before. The year before that, we exchanged slingshots. All of which is fine by me, for we are champion kite flyers who study the wind like sailors, my friend more accomplished than I, can get a kite aloft when there isn't enough breeze to carry clouds. Christmas Eve, we scrape together a nickel to buy Queenie's traditional gift. Our work is finished. Now all that is left is the long wait till dawn. I can't sleep a hoot. My mind is jumping like a jackrabbit. Oh, buddy. Do you think Mrs. Roosevelt will serve our cake at dinner? I hope so. <laughs> Well, 
Seems like your hand used to be much smaller. Oh. Well, I guess I hate to see you grow up. When you are grown up, will we still be friends? Always. Mm. Oh, but I feel so bad, buddy. I want it so bad to give you a bike. I tried so hard to sell my cameo Papa gave me. I made you another kite. I made you a kite, too. household emerges. Of course, they'd like to kill us both, but it's Christmas, so they can't. Join hands. Oh. 
I'm disappointed. Who wouldn't be with socks, a Sunday school shirt, some handkerchief, a hand-me-down sweater, and a year's subscription to a religious magazine for children, The Little Shepherd. It makes me boil. It really does. My friend has a better haul. Some sweet-smelling soap, a new garden shears, fancy pot holders, a sewing basket, and a sack of satsumas. She is proudest, however, of a white wool shawl knitted by her married sister. I think I'll go get the fire a poke. I think you'd better drink your milk in the kitchen, buddy. Why? Because it's in the kitchen. That's why. Come on. When did you do that? Oh, the other night when you were sound asleep, dreaming whatever boys dream about. Still this one, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm real partial to Angel. This is the best tree I ever saw in my whole life. Cross your heart? Without the shiny silver ball. Let's open up here. to give you a bicycle. I wanted to give you a whole pound of chocolate-covered cherries. Oh, well. It's bad enough in life to have to do without something you want. But what gets my goat is not being able to give somebody something you want them to have. But I'd rather have a kite. Really, I would. One of these days, I am going to locate you a bike. Don't ask how. Steal it, maybe. Oh, buddy, the wind is blowing. Come on. is blowing, and nothing will do till we've run to a pasture below the house where Queenie has scooted to bury her bone, and where, a winter hence, Queenie will be buried too. We unreel our kites, feel them twitching at the string, like sky fish as they swim into the wind. Satisfied, sun warmed, we sprawl in the grass and watch our kites cavort. You know, 
what I always thought. I always thought a body had to be sick and dying before they saw the Lord. I imagined that when he came, it would be like looking at a Baptist window. Pretty as colored glass, and the sun pouring through. Such a shine, you wouldn't know it was getting dark. And a comfort to me. That shine. It'd take away all the spooky feeling. <laughs> but I wager it isn't like that. I wager it never happened. I wager at the very end, a body realizes that the Lord has already shown himself. The things as they are, just what they have always seen, was seeing him. Mm. As for me, I could leave the world with today in my eyes. is our last Christmas together. Life separates us. Those who know best decide that I belong in a military school. And so follows a miserable succession of bugle-blowing prisons, grim, reveille-ridden summer camps. I have a new home, too, but it doesn't count. Home is where my friend is, and there I never go. And there she remains, puttering around the kitchen, alone with Queenie, then alone. Buddy, dear. She writes in her wild, hard-to-read script. Yesterday, Jim Macy's horse kicked Queenie bad. Be thankful she didn't feel much. I wrapped her in a fine linen sheet and rode her in the buggy down to Simpson's pasture, where she can be with all her bones. For a few Novembers, she continues to bake her fruitcake single-handed. Not as many, but some. And, of course, she always sends me... Mm, the best of the batch. Also, in every letter, she encloses a dime wadded in toilet paper. See a picture show and write me the story. But gradually, in her letters, she tends to confuse me with her other friend, the buddy who died in the 1880s. More and more, 13th are not the only day she stays in bed. A morning arrives in November, a leafless, birdless coming of winter morning, when she cannot rouse herself to exclaim, Oh, my. It's fruitcake weather. And when that happens, I know it. A message saying so merely confirms the piece of news some secret vein had already received, severing from me an irreplaceable part of myself, letting it loose like a kite on a broken string. That is why, on this particular December morning, I keep searching the sky as if I expected to see, rather like hearts, a lost pair of kites hurrying toward heaven. Stay with us now for nature and see how special video techniques and new camera lenses are allowing us to perceive for the first time in color how animals and insects view the world around them. And please remember that Channel 2's year-end fiscal goal is two days away. Help us stay on budget with your support and your check to Channel 2 Boston and many thanks. Thank you.